Hello everyone, welcome back to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I'm Matt Schmelzer here with uh, Practical Machinist. And uh, today we're taking another look at our part that we started in our last video, uh, talking about corner radiuses. So on this particular part, um, we got some corner radiuses on each side. Uh, one side we have a half inch radius, the other side we have a 3 8 radius along that corner. Um, in our last video, we created a program for just our half inch radius. Now again, kind of going back, uh, you know, usually the most efficient way of doing a project like this is using a form tool and just cutting across that edge to create that radius. Now these form tools are specific for the radius. So in this particular part here, we need two separate tools for doing that. Uh, and again, we talked about our technique that we did last time. Um, not always the fastest technique, uh, but sometimes we may have a situation where we have an odd size radius where maybe we can't find the correct tool to do that, a metric size or uh, something like that. So um, what we did in our last video, just to rehash that, is uh, we set up a program here to interpolate that radius in the Y and the Z axis. And we would interpolate to one side, reposition incrementally, interpolate back to the top, and then reposition in the x-axis. And then we put the machine into a loop motion to just keep repeating that all the way down the length of the part. Now, it is a good technique, it works. It's a very simple program. If you look back at that video on how we did that, very simple just doing G2, G3 interpolation moves and looping that across the length of that part. Now, the downfall of that is the cycle time. Uh, we're doing a lot of repositioning along this part, and when we reposition, we're not cutting metal, we're not making chips. So we're spending a lot of time just moving the tool to the next position versus cutting chips. So our cycle time on this particular part with feeds and speeds that we we're running, it was approximately five minutes. So now we're gonna look at a different technique as we're actually going to traverse across this part and then reposition in the Y and Z and traverse back across to the other part, other side, and then reposition, and then put the machine into a looping motion. That's gonna spend a lot more time cutting versus repositioning for the next cut. We're hoping to reduce our cycle time, increase efficiency on this part. Now on top of increasing our efficiency, we wanna add some variability to this program also. Let's say I want to change my end mill from a three quarter inch to a half inch without having to reprogram this entire part. I just want to change a simple variable in our program. The other thing too, looking at this part here, we have a half inch radius and a three eighths radius. Well, for each side, I'd have to reprogram this to change my radius from one side to the other. I'm going to add a variable to that. So all I have to do is change one value in my program and that'll allow me to reconfigure this whole program without having to rewrite it. So let's go over the board and go over our technique for this program. All right, so on the board, I got just a couple of illustrations we're gonna talk to and some techniques. So looking at, here's a view of the top of our part and kind of how our tool path is gonna work is we're gonna position our end mill off the side of the part here, at least the radius of the tool, three eighths of an inch. We're using a three quarter inch ball nose. We'll bring it down to the surface of the part and we're gonna traverse across and then we're going to reposition in the Y and the Z axis and mill across the other direction. And then we're going to reposition to our final spot, Y and Z. And then we'll be able to put the machine into a loop. So when it goes back, it's going to cut across and continue that motion all the way down the side of the part. So looking at the side view of our part here, um, I got a couple of illustrations. So this is going to be our start point, the center of the tool, right at the tangent point of our radius. Now, with this case here, we can't do a simple Y and Z move and repeat that exact same amount. That doesn't work with the radius here. It works very well for doing a straight angle on a part, but a radius, the Y and Z are gonna be constantly variable as it gets to different tangent points on this radius. So instead of doing a Y and Z, we're gonna to have to do an angular movement. In this case here, from one pass to the next, we're gonna do it in three degree increments. And that's going to control our step over amount. And we're going to put that into an equation into our program. Now, to add some other complexity to it, we're going to be doing a datum shift too. We're going to do a G52 in our program. And that's going to shift our Y0 at the edge of the part and our Z0 
at the top of the part, we're going to shift that down to the center point of that radius. That's going to allow the equations to work very simple in our program. So when we're looking at adding angles and shifts in this program, we're going to be using polar coordinates. If we look at polar coordinates, always the zero degree, 90, 180, 270. In this case here, we're going to be starting at the 90 degree position on this radius. So we're starting at 90 degrees here, and we're gonna make a sweep down to the 180. And we're gonna be doing that in three degree increments. So the formula we're gonna use in our program, looking at our Y step over, it's gonna be the cosine of our angle times the radius. And the radius is actually what we used as our vector in our last program. It's that distance from the center of the ball to that center point. And we're using a three quarter inch ball, so that's three eighths plus half inch for our part radius. And then for our step down in our z-axis, we're gonna be using the formula, the sine of the angle times that radius. So I'll flip the board around and we'll look at our program for this. All right, so on the board, I have our program for this particular part. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't look like traditional G-code on here because we add some variability to this program. It allows the machine to be a little more intuitive and make the calculations instead of creating a very long, intensive program for this part. We'll walk through step by step. So the first couple lines in our code are really nothing more than just setting some variables, and I'm using some global variables for this. These are just replacing actual values in the program with something that can be changed. So to start off, I'm using global variable number 100, and that equals 90 degrees. That's our start angle using polar coordinates. We're starting at the top of the part, which is at the 90 degree mark in polar coordinates. So that's our start angle. The next one is our increment angle. That's what we're changing our position every time we make a pass along that radius. So we're going in three degree increments. Now, to, in order for that to work out correctly, this angle needs to be divisible into 90 degrees equally. If it does not, we're gonna have an odd uh, angle at the very end. So three degrees each pass goes into 90 degrees 30 times. So now we look at our next variable, 102.5. That's our part radius. So we're doing a half inch radius for the other side. To make this whole program work, I just have to change that one value to 3 eighths, 0.375. So we're doing the first side here. The next one is our tool radius. We're using a three quarter inch ball nose. Our tool radius is three eighths of an inch. And then our very last one here, I just made a mathematical calculation. This is our ball center line radius vector. That's from the center line of that ball nose to the center line of our part radius. So that does the calculation where I take variable 102 half inch plus variable 103 three eighths. Variable number 104 is going to equal 0.875. And then I start my program here. In the very first line, I call up a datum shift G52, and I just clear everything out. That eliminates any kind of shift that I may have active in my program. So if I have to restart the machine in the middle of this cycle, if I go to rerun it, it's going to zero it back out and start from zero. And then I have my safety line. G90, G20, G40, G17, just setting my safety commands. And then I start off with my tool change, T1. I turn my spindle on here at 10,000 RPM clockwise. And then I'm moving to my very first position, which is gonna center the tool at the center line of that radius, tangent point, and half of the radius of the tool off the part. So I replace that with some variables here. In case I end up changing my end mill size, let's say I go to a half inch end mill or a quarter inch end mill, I put those variables in there so it changes. Or if I change my part radius from half inch to three eighths, it's gonna change that tangent point. So for this particular part, I'm moving to X negative variable 103, so negative 0.375, and then variable 102 for my Y position, which is my radius of 0.5, a half inch. Then I call up my height offset and I move to a clearance point three inches above, move to a feed plane of 0.1, turning my coolant on, and then I feed down to the surface of the part at 100 inches a minute. And then finally I go into my subprogram here. And I'm doing a loop of 15 times for my subprogram. And to explain that loop amount, 
basically what I did is I took the total swing of that program. So it's starting at the 90 degree mark and it's going to 180. So that's a 90 degree swing and I'm dividing it by six degrees because I'm going to do two passes at three degrees of my subprogram, so I'm looping that 15 times. So that brings us over to our subprogram here, program 1000. So right away in the beginning of my subprogram, I call out a datum shift, G52, and that's where I shift my Y axis to the center line of that radius, which is a half inch. And then my z, which is my vector, I go down to negative variable 104, which was 0.875. So basically it's telling the machine zero and y and z is the center of that radius. And then I come to my first x move here. This is going to traverse across the part. Well, I'm going five and a half inches, which is the length of my part, plus the radius of my tool here, variable 103. So again, if I change my tool radius, it's going to either move farther or less off the edge of the part. So that travels across the part in X. And then I'm ready to do my shift in the Y and Z, but I need to change my angle for my calculation because we started at 90 degrees to begin with. Well, now I want to uptick that another three degrees. So I say my variable 100, which is 90 degrees, is now going to equal 90 degrees plus my increment for my step over, which is three degrees. Just changes that in the calculation to 93 degrees. So then when I do my Y step down, it's gonna take the cosine of that new angle, 93 times my vector radius. And then my Z position step down, it's gonna take the sine of that angle, 93 degrees times my vector step down radius. And then it's ready to go ahead and make our cut back across to the other side of the part. So it's going to X negative variable 103, which is the radius of the tool. That's going to bring it off the edge of the part, the radius of the tool. And now I'm going to change my angle because we're going to move an additional three degrees. So now I just say variable 100, which should be 93 degrees right now, is equal to 93 degrees plus an additional three degrees, which makes it 96 degrees for my angle increase. And then it plugs it into these formulas to reposition the Y axis, cosine of my 96 degrees times my vector radius, and then Z, sine of 96 degrees times my vector radius. That gets it into position, so now when I go back up to the beginning, first thing it does is cut across an X and repeat that motion. So now my M99s going to send this back to my main program and that's where I bring my Z back up to my three inch clearance plane and then I want to make sure I cancel out my datum shift so I G52 and I just zero up my Y zero up my Z so it's right back to our original G54 positions and then I bring the spindle home in Z home in Y in the end of the program so there's a lot of mathematical equations going on in this subprogram, but this makes it variable. So if I want to change my tool radius, or I want to change my part radius, or I want to change my increment step over amount, uh, it does all the work for me. I do not have to rewrite that program. I just change these simple variable numbers. Let's go ahead and load it in the machine, see how this thing runs. All right, so we got both of our parts here on the bench side by side. Uh, you can see we got a pretty comparable finish. You know, this is the part here that we actually interpolated uh, along that radius. And here's our new program here with our variables cutting in the X axis along this. We actually ended up with a little better finish across this part, stepping over three degrees. We could maybe even increase that up a little bit more to really cut some cycle time down. Now, looking at this part here, again, anytime we repositioned, we were not making chips. On this particular part, we repositioned twice in that subprogram and we looped it 150 times. So essentially, we're repositioning 300 times along this profile. Now, in this particular part, we had to loop that subprogram 15 times, so we were repositioning 30 times. Now again, to talk about this part here, the first part that we did with the interpolation program, this ran for five minutes, a cycle time. 
This particular part here now with our new and improved program, we did the same feeds, same feed rate. We cut it down to two minutes. So definitely a lot more efficient. We're spending more time removing metal versus repositioning our tool. So again, real hard pressed to uh, beat a form cutter, but on this particular program, we can change our end mill size if we don't have a three quarter inch end mill or we need a smaller end mill for some reason. And now on this part, when we flip it over to do our three eighths radius, we just go back into our variables and change that one variable from half inch to three eighths. And it recalculates all of our points on that particular part. Or again, if we want to increase our cycle time, maybe change our step over degree amount from three degrees to something more where the surface finish is allowed, we can increase our uh, profitability even more yet. So I want to thank you guys for joining us. Hope this program and this little tip here can help you out someday. We'll see you next time.